welcome to another Women Lead TV segment brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Burquist, your host of Bad Ass Business Women. Wow, that's a mouthful. With me is a bad ass business woman and I'm delighted for you to be my featured guest today. This is Kimberly Centero and she is the CEO of Terra Pro Solutions. So I'm gonna ask the big question here, Miss Kimberly. It's like, what are renewable energies? I'm like, you. I hear you talk about your business all the time and I'm like, it goes right over my head. I know it's super smart. I know it's very male dominated. It's something to do with renewables and energies and that's what I know. Give me the once over. What is renewable energy? Right, right. It's a great question. And so our firm is the leading risk mitigation firm specializing in finance, uh, real estate and title for energy projects. And so our clients are typically developers okay. that are looking to develop commercial scale projects. So we're in the commercial space for renewable energy. A lot of people are familiar with solar on their homes mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's not the kind of projects that we are working on. We are working on large commercial scale projects for utilities across the United States. And typically our clients are responding to some kind of a, a mandate from a utility to build a project oh. where there's a demand for renewable energy. And so renewables is really about um, diversification of power. Okay. And so we're obviously familiar with oil and gas and a lot of the typical resources. Right. But wind and solar is just another way that we can diversify our resources and use the sun or use the wind, you know, some of our natural resources right. that are out already in the environment. So I'm curious, so when I was in banking, you know, one of the things we would always do with a commercial property is, you know, because of gas and oil, we would have to go and do tests and studies before we would finance any project if it was at a commercial location. So for you, do, do is that similar where it's like it's before they build the property or do they already know what they want to do and they bring you in to really do what for them? Help them like really be kind of transfer and be more renewable in their energy at that site? I'm trying to understand it of like when does a company know Know they need you. I'm really curious. Right. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can help our clients. In some cases, we'll have a client that will want to be a new entrant into a particular market. Uh, we worked on a project in Illinois for one of our for one of our clients, and there was a period of time it was the largest renewable project, 150 megawatts that oh, was wow. permitted. So in that case, we started out with our client. We helped them identify the site, secure the site. So it can be leases, it can be purchases, all the way through assisting permitting and we're getting ready to go into construction on that project. In other cases, our clients have identified a site okay. and they want us to help them with due diligence. They want us to help them structure all the real estate and the title. Because all these projects are financed and there's banks involved and you have that background, mm -hmm. you know there's that due diligence that yes. goes along. There's, if you've ever bought a house, you know there's those three inches of paperwork you know, that you have to sign. And so it's similar in our business, um, but just magnified because there's, you know, so much more money at stake. I totally have a better idea of what you do now. I'm so excited <laughs> about that. Cause I mean, I knew the words, but I didn't know the scenario when you were brought in. It's like, and all that. So thank you. I mean, that, that was awesome. I think now I, I'm guessing, and we, I know you do a lot of this with some of the female focused association in the industry that you do a lot of giving back and, and training and speaking and consulting with, but it's very male dominated. I mean, one, how did you even get into this industry? And number two, how have you navigated such a male dominated industry? Right. Saying the words are enough. I mean, but I'm right. just saying, cause you've been in it a lot, quite a bit. I've been in renewables a long time, almost 25 years. Wow. So, you know, I was back, you know, a lot of people say, oh, renewables, isn't that great? It's really, you know, kind of a new industry, but it's not. For those of us that have been around mm -hmm. the space mm -hmm. for a while, it's, it's really been around for a while. Has it always been called renewables? I mean, has that always been the word or was there something else uh, that was kind of the old school version uh, of it? Good question. I, I mean, I think probably always renewables okay. has, has been okay. how I've always known it. Okay. Um, you know, starting early on, uh, I had a lot of male mentors mm. that were very instrumental in encouraging me. Um, my business really, I, I was working for a company that closed, you know, um, and closed, they had a San Diego office and closed their office. And so I was one of those women who was turning 50 and uh, facing, you know, a really major life change. What am I going to do? You yeah. know, I, and so I was interviewing for a job 
And uh, interestingly enough, I was going to go to work for a company who wanted someone to build their renewable division specializing in title. <laughs> and as I thought more and more about this over the course of time, and I'd already done some consulting work, I thought, you know, what would happen if instead of doing it for them, I did it for me? Just, I mean, just a thought came through. You know, Was it there did. A I, I started to think about That's this crazy. idea of, you know, what would happen if I just tried to do this on my own? What would happen if I built this on my own? Yeah. If I used my resources? you know, instead of for their benefit, right. you know, for my benefit, to see what would happen. And really that's where the business was, was born, you know, just from that idea of, you know, what will happen if I try this? And I, Good for you. you know, you think about having all the answers and, you know, I didn't, I had no idea when I was starting this. I mean, I was really one of those people that just kept telling myself, just take the next step, just take the next oh, step. And things have been perfect for you, right? In all those years? You There's know, nothing, absolutely. No I'm one of those, the road. those really, no. my, you know, minority women that's right. had no issues. It's been absolutely perfect. It's called so. deflection. We always look like right. everything's great, everything's yes. wonderful, but behind the closed doors, it's a, uh, you know, I know your, your, your niche, like ours is in women's advancement and connected women of influence, is on being supportive of women and their advancement and their careers and their leadership. And I'm curious for you, in the renewable space, what are some of the things that you've seen women do that just maybe miss the mark of it, you know, and being the most effective leader they can be. I mean, I still feel like it's such a different dichotomy of what we, what people will say of do this, but not that. And it's like, I go, it's about getting the results. So I'm curious on your perspective, because I definitely have an opinion, but I want to hear what yours are from what you see that women just miss the mark on when it comes to being the most effective leader they can be. Right. You know, it's a great question. And I spend a lot of time coaching and, and mentoring women. It's, it's really my passion because I have my career. And so, you know, when I think about that, I, I see a lot of things. Um, I, I see that, uh, you know, women, a lot of times they don't ask, you know, they're, they're assume you know, or... they, they assume they, they don't ask questions. They're maybe they think that they don't they're not qualified. Uh, I see also there's a lot of talk around advancement, mm -hmm. but there really aren't a lot of programs. And, and I just spoke with a woman about this last week where her company wants to promote women, but they have no women that are promotable. Wow. All they have are, you know, a lot According of young women to... just coming in, but no women that are, are can move into that senior executive oh, wow. space. And so when I think about that, I think I don't know that we do a good enough job the mentoring of side mentoring of it and, and preparing yeah, because yeah. I was telling someone the other day I don't know when I was in the corporate world if I would have been considered executive management material mm -hmm. but now that I've had my business with the coaching and the training and everything that I've gone through mm -hmm. I've had people say did you ever see yourself being where you are now and I it was I, a different time I mean, it was I'm, a different time yeah I couldn't have I, am, but... I couldn't have imagined right and so just thinking about that, I mean, that is a large part of my passion. Only 13% of renewables is women. Wow. And a lot of that is technical jobs. So when you think about the women that are doing what we're doing, it's mm -hmm. even a smaller oh, percentage yeah. of women. So, and even now when I go to conferences, you know, you walk into the room mm -hmm. and it's predominantly, you know, yeah. men. And so there's that challenge. So I got two questions. Like number one, you know, what I hear from women a lot, and this is again, different industry. So I'm curious with renewables, women will say, you know, I see my male counterparts and they just have access to leadership that I don't. Men golf together, you know, the senior leadership, they do kind of like the family things. There's just a grooming and a mentoring that's different. And I've just heard over and over of women that just feel so uncomfortable in that space. Like if they don't golf, if they're, you know, I, I'm, I remember my mentor in banking, he goes, just go walk the, walk the leadership halls, the senior leadership every morning. I'm like, just go freaking walk down the hall. And he go, here's a rule of five. But he goes, walk the hall. He goes, just say good morning, be seen, be visible. I mean, it was a different generation, but I'm curious women keep telling me that like what would you recommend for women to get that access because it is if they don't know you they don't know you're promotable they might hear about you but how can women get that visibility and that access in renewables i i think it's a great question as well and you know i always encourage women you know to find a mentor mm -hmm. find someone uh, within the organization and it can't even be you know a lot of times it's a man right that's in some kind of an executive level that will uh, help and guide you because you know a lot of companies will say that there's a plan in place but it's not real clear 
And There's that not to me clarity. doesn't work when they and, try to assign. Like, how, but right. here's the thing: women will say too, like, how do I go up and ask somebody to be my mentor? Like, what would you recommend for somebody? I wish I would have done this in a different way in my commercial banking career. But you know, they, you have to know what you want as a mentor, right? So how would you even approach a, a guy to say, hey, you know, would you mentor me? You know, don't say pick your brain. We know that's not one to do, but. You know, when I was just starting my business and my, my first coach, and she had suggested I get together some marketing material, and she said, why don't you call this man who was a wonderful attorney, super big proponent of women in renewables, Howard mm -hmm. Sussman. He's mm -hmm. since passed away, but she said, you know, go meet with Howard, talk to Howard and get some feedback from Howard. And I still am thankful to this day that I called him and I said, you know, would you be willing to meet with me for an hour and See, just what a great talk question. about my business, right? right? And he gave me such invaluable advice. And so I already knew that he was mm -hmm. a proponent and a supporter of women. So, um, so I think finding those people, and they're out there. There are men out there that, even if they're not within your organization, there are men out there that are willing to spend time with you mm -hmm. and you know sit down, have a conversation. Here's what I'm thinking. Can I bounce this idea off yeah. of you? So I love you know, that. I love I, that. I presented some material to him, and I said, "Here's my initial marketing material. What do you think?" Mm -hmm. And he gave me a lot of great feedback. He said, "I'll make introductions for you." I mean, I, as I say, I'm still thankful to this mm -hmm. day for his willingness to invest time in me yeah. and just share with me and help encourage me. So there, those people are out there. Um, and I think women too, but men are great. You well, know, I'm inspired to hear that because like the whole thing of like, you know, men are bad people and, you know, women are men haters. And I'm like, there are so many men that I know that same thing talked to and said, I just don't know what to do. And it's like the other part that was amazing to me is men would say, I'm not going to make the interaction because of what the assumptions are in the workplace. Like women, men now will not meet with closed doors and meeting rooms or offices. I mean, there's just so much in the media that there are bad dudes out there. But I think there are many men that want to be really supportive of women's advancement. But, you know, if you're a woman, and you just said earlier, and I agreed, women don't ask, you got to ask. I mean, it's how you ask as well. And I, I just think that's fabulous. I mean, in your journey, what would be, other than asking, one of the things that maybe you would do differently in your leadership journey? Because I think I've got tons of lessons <laughs> that I would do differently, but curious for you we all you know it's always hindsight for us right 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 I mean right there's there's just so many things um, you know just I think you know I I was always willing to do the hard things mm -hmm. and I think you have to be willing to challenge yourself and do the hard yeah. things and there were times where I was really nervous you know scared you know I would walk into I I remember one conference I walked in and I had to pick which table I was going to sit at for lunch and there was the table that had the women mostly women and a couple men and then mm -hmm. there was the one table with all the executives in in the navy suits and I'm dying to know suits. which one you chose and I thought Kim you've got to challenge yourself you've got to do the hard thing you've got to go Good. so I walked up to the table with all the men and I was like do you mind if I join you and they were like oh sure they moved their chairs wow. I sat down Ended up having a fabulous conversation That's with uh, one of a man who works for Duke Energy. It was so amazing. Mm -hmm. Gave me some great. Uh, he, I said, "What books are you reading right now?" And he said, "Read this book." I was like, "Awesome!" I you know, that. by Brene Brown. So I, we just had a great time just talking, and it, you know, I ended up only talking to two or three people at the table. But well, what a standout! But men right? were very receptive, and I think that's hmm. maybe part of the lesson there. Yeah. Is you? I think if you reach out, you will find that men are willing to help if you're mm -hmm. willing to ask and say what do you suggest what do you recommend mm -hmm. what are you reading mm -hmm. now what you know how do you see your career what were some of the things that you did love it so I think that has really been something that I would say do more of because That's I didn't great do step. that early on yeah I didn't do that early on and I can't think I would have either and it was mostly male dominated and then the other big part is like you just walked up and then you started asking those great questions engaged them all of a sudden into what you wanted to know that's fabulous that's fabulous I you know we've only got like seriously one last kind of like second here or two but what you know what else would you tell women as you, they think how women can be more supportive of other women because there still is that that mm, just drives me right. crazy women not supporting others and it, it it 
saddens me because I think, man, there's all this out there that says women are, you know, badass for each other. But what would be your advice to any of the women out there as our viewers and our, you know, listening audience? Like, what would you say we should do to be supportive of other women? I know you got it. You probably have 20, but give me one. <laughs> you only have right. I mean, I think it's super important who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. So make sure you've got a really great supportive tribe around you. You know, build a tribe, make sure that it's people yeah. that see you, that are genuine, that care about you, that will give you honest feedback, and that, that are there for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're right, not, not every woman is really going to be supportive, but there are great women out there. Yep. Find them and keep them close to you, and make sure and check in with them on what's going on and, and share you know, super important. Well, I got to be yeah. me and say, of course, connected women of influence in exactly. that place, right? I mean, let's go there, right? <laughs> right. You are so badass. And I'm, I'm, you know, my last question, because I, I usually ask, it's like, what can you inspire us, us with? And that was fabulous on that one, but I'm going to go different. Like, what, in your opinion, can women do to be more badass? And how do you define badass? Wow. Badass you know, business women. Oh, my gosh. You know, I, I think... You know, you have to step out when you don't have all the answers. You know, there's that old adage that women don't apply for jobs because they don't yes. meet every qualification. Yeah. In my case, when I started my business, I had no idea what the journey was going to look like. Mm -hmm. I had some vision of where I wanted to go, but I didn't know every single step. But right. I did it. I, I was willing to, you know, take the That's risk. Good. So I think be willing to take the risk, believe in yourself, and recognize that maybe you don't have all the answers, but that's okay. You don't have to have all the answers. Just do it, just start, take Ooh. that first step. That's like drop the mic, that's so badass. <laughs> I wanna thank you for being my guest. It's like you were awesome. And it's like, we'll have you back. Thank uh, you. We've just got so much to share. To all of our listeners and our viewers, it's like we wanna say thank you for listening to Women Lead TV and watching us. We'll be back for another segment and we will see you very soon. And for today, it's like go ask, take a seat at the table, engage men, and I'm trying to think of the last thing. It's like be badass. We'll see you on the next show. <laughs>